Hello and welcome. Here are the stories trending on NT International this hour. I am Joyce Umetu. We begin on the foreign scene. President Mohamed Buhari has joined four other ECOWAS leaders in Bamako, Republic of Mali, on a one-day peace mission following the political crisis rocking the West African nation. President Buhari and the ECOWAS leaders agreed to meet in Bamako for further consultations towards finding a political solution to the crisis in the country. The ECOWAS leaders are scheduled to meet separately with the Malian leader, President Ibrahim Keita, as well as Imam Mahoud, Mahmoud Diko and the M5 Strategic Committee in furtherance of the meditation efforts. A communique is expected at the end of the crucial meeting aimed at achieving sustainable peace, democracy and development in the Republic. Still on the foreign scene, a 203-member group, one of China's eighth batch of peace keeping troops to Mali departed from Shenyang, Northeast China, Wednesday to perform a one-year unmandated mission in the West African nation. This batch of peacekeeping troops came from a combined brigade and an engineering and chemical response brigade of the 79th Army Corps of the People's Liberation Army. They are divided into three detachments of guards, sappers, and medical care. Back in Nigeria, the Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs has declared Friday, the 31st July 2020, as the 10th day of Zulhijjah, 1441 after Hijra, and the day of Eid al Kabir festival. A statement by the council says the Sultan of Sokoto and the President of the Council, Mohammed Sahad III, felicitates with Nigerian Muslims and wishes them Allah's guidance and blessings. The Council advises Muslim communities throughout the country to observe Eid prayers at Jumat Mosque to help curb the spread of COVID-19 pandemic. Now an update on COVID-19. The Nigeria Center for Disease Control and CDC has announced 543 new cases of COVID-19 in the country. The cases were recorded in 15 states, including the FCT. This brings the total number of confirmed cases to 38,344. 15,815 discharged with 813 deaths. The remains of Nigeria's first female combat helicopter pilot, Tolulope Arotile, has been laid to rest today at the National Military Cemetery in Abuja. Late flying officer Tolulope Arotile passed away on the 16th of July as a result of head injuries in an auto accident. Thank you for watching. I am Joyce Umetu. is the network service of the NTA. Welcome to this edition of Platform. I am Muhammad Kudu Abubakar. Towards realizing the objective of Nigeria's economic and recovery growth plan, the federal government on the 5th of June 2020 inaugurated the steering committee for the Nigeria Digital Identity for Development Ecosystem Project. The steering committee's chairman and secretary to the government of the federation, Boss Mustafa, noted that digital identification is central and critical. He stated that the strategic roadmap approved by the Federal Executive Council, FEC, in September 2018 is a culmination of the enormous collective efforts and contributions of several institutions and stakeholders that began in 2015 when the Buhari administration took a decision to forge a credible and cost-effective pathway identification management. The project steering committee was therefore established 
as the highest body composed of ministers, the governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Director General NOAA, and civil society organizations as members. The Secretary to the Government of the Federation is Chairman. The Minister of Finance, Budget, and National Planning, Zainab Ahmed, is the alternate chairman and member. While the Director General, National Identity Management Commission, Engineer Aliu Abubakar Aziz, who is our guest on this edition of Platform, is the Steering Committee's Secretary. Why the Project Steering Committee? What are its mandates? And how is the committee fast-tracking its work for the digital national identity ecosystem? What are the strategies for increasing the enrollment of the entire eligible population, which entails increasing the database by 187 million within the next five, three to five years? Our guest, Aliu Abubakar Aziz, has more than 30 years of post-qualification experience in engineering and information technology in both private and public sectors. He holds a bachelor's of engineering in civil engineering and master in science in structural engineering with specialty in computer-aided design from the Ahmad Bello University's area. He was appointed Director General NIMSI in November 2015 and reappointed for second term November 2019. Mr. Aziz became Secretary, Steering Committee for the Nigeria Digital Identity for Development of the Ecosystem Project at its inauguration on the 5th of June 2020. Engineer Aliu Abubakar Aziz, Director General, National Identity Management Commission, welcome to Platform. Thank you very much. If I remember you were uh, on this program uh, exactly 19th of September 2019, then we were exerting the mandates and objectives of NIMSI. But yes. today it is a whole new ball game. We are looking at, at the entire Nigeria's digital identity ecosystem. Uh, but very, very warmly, and thank you for, for, for coming again, uh, Mr. Aziz. But before we start, let me introduce our panelist, Ruth Aguele. Thank you very much. Please, Mr. Aziz, like I said, welcome once again. Let's look at the immediate long-term objectives of this project and the mandates of the steering committee. Well, uh, thank you very much, and I'm pleased to be here again. Um, and that, uh, the, as you rightly say, the steering committee is to, uh, just like the word says, that it is to steer the, the ship. And the ship, as you re recall, is to enroll or register everybody in Nigeria and issue them with a unique national identification number. So uh, uh, we, we have in the committee uh, ministers and also the SGF in the presidency to take charge of that committee. So their role is to ensure that in three to five years, we should be able to enroll about 187 million Nigerians and give them unique names. Right now we have 41.6 million unique names in our database. Why 187? Why not 200 million that we are told are the estimated population of Nigeria? Yeah, as, as the roadmap was, uh, was prepared in, uh, in June 2017, as uh, 2016 specifically, that is when it was, uh, we started development. At that time, that was the estimated population of Nigeria. But as we all know that we grow almost every year by uh, close to seven, seven million newborn babies. So, um, and we believe that the number will increase. But by the time that we have reached that point, we'll be sure that having an ecosystem, an ecosystem by nature is a sustainable system. And therefore, everybody in the soil of Nigeria at, at the end of the three to five years must have a digital identity. So let's go to the strategies now. Yes, sir. 
Well, the, the strategy, first of all, is to, is to review the, the strengthen the legal framework. As you know, we have many, many agencies, many, many, uh, many laws that have been set up at different times. So therefore, there is a need to harmonize those, those uh, laws. So part of the steering committee's job is to f form a, a, a legal uh, working group, which they have already formed and they have started uh, working on, on, on harmonizing all the laws. But first of all, they started with the data protection law. So by, uh, before the end of the year, they intend to have the data protection law in place and then go ahead to, to, to check all the other agencies that where they have any form of identification in their own laws. And we have more than more than 20 agencies that have these laws, so we need to harmonize them. That is the second uh, function of the steering committee. Okay, and from what you said about the 41.6 um, citizens who are enrolled, that's about 5.2 million per annum. Yes. Now, from your assessment, would you say we are on track as a nation if we're talking um, national development? with that number are we on track if well, looking at the roadmap yeah well we we were not on track that is why we came up with this strategic roadmap because if we were annually rolling 5.2 then actually it would take uh, many years i don't want to call the uh, years before we complete the the existing population and by the time that we complete that because we are also growing then we will have had similar number that is that you need to enroll. So that is why we came up with the strategic roadmap. And simply the strategic roadmap means that all government agencies that are capturing data and all private sector people that have known how to do this. Remember in early to, uh, year 2000, when we, did, we didn't have the technology, we got a European company that came to do everything by just one company. But now we have already known how to do this. So we have many people that can do that. So with the right funding, which the, the strategic roadmap is uh, providing, then all government agencies will capture data and also private sector will capture data. And then by right now, we are growing, as you said, 5.2 averagely. We expect that, that number to be monthly average by the, by the second year. So we will start maybe by 3 million every month. By the second year, we'll be ram, ramming up by 5 million every month. But if you the, must achieve that, sorry yes. to interrupt there, yeah. um, if you must achieve that, there must be joint effort and coordinated approach between state governments, stakeholders, from what you're saying. And part of these people are members of the steering committee. So what will be their role in achieving this? Well, that is why you, you have, uh, um, because this is, this is a program that also the development partners are involved and based on their years of experience, they knew that the civil society is very close, uh, close to the grassroots people. The private sector is much more efficient uh, than, than government. Therefore, in the steering committee, you also have the civil society members re represented and also you have the private sector. Then you have all the top government officials that are in need of data. You know that early uh, uh, when we met, we were doing this uh, jam. And you can see that Nigerians also wait until the last day, then they come and jump the whole, the, the whole system, which we, we couldn't handle. Mm. And immediately that has been suspended. Then the US government uh, uh, gave directives that uh, stopping certain categories of our visa entry. Then there's a presidential committee that is working on that, which identity is also or part of it. Then COVID also came mm -hmm. and we knew that distributing palliatives also requires accountability mm -hmm. that who and who 
that is given this. So if everybody has nin, then all you need to do is to give your nin and then you will be given palliatives and whoever that is responsible will list the nin of the people that have been given the palliatives. Then you have that. So that is why everybody is involved. Okay. I think w w what Ruth was trying to ask, uh, yeah. let me rephrase it. Okay, now. okay. How do you begin to act, uh, to make sure the entire members of the steering committee work in tandem with each other and how is uh, responsibility delineated so that there will be a systematic approach to okay. the entire work? Well, well as, you, as, you, as you know that this is a presidential directive and all of those members at the top, they are part of the uh, um, presidential team and therefore things like to do with uh, the legal regulatory framework is being headed by the Attorney General who is also the Minister of Justice to carry out that activities. Things that are related to like uh, uh, information technology and telecommunication, we have the Honorable Minister of, uh, uh, of uh, Communications and the Digital Economy that is also a member who will pull, pull those uh, 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 like the telco, uh, telecommunication sector into the into the program. Then you have the Minister of Education. Uh, we have mentioned that education is one of the big chunk that majority of our our children are in the education sector. If you check the population figures, you will see that more than. 50% is 24 years and below. And all, most of those people are in the education sector. And then if you think of linkages with the health sector, the Minister of Health is there and he has made, already made a lot of contribution to do with standardization of the, of the naming system so that from the hospitals you will be, uh, if you have a new baby, the new baby will be registered and will be given the name at birth. Have you started that? No, it's, it's part of this program to commence that, but it hasn't started yet. So that is why you have all these members as part of the steering committee to make sure that this happens. What will the CSOs be doing? Because I can see the SISLAC uh, chief executive, Raf Sanjani, yeah. and uh, uh, two Joe Abba. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Joe Abba. Mm. Like I mentioned, that the, because this is a, um, a development partners program, and they really believe, and it is like part of their own culture, that the those civil society are closer to the grassroots people. So with them understanding this program, then there will be greater buy-in of the of the grassroots people rather than thinking that it is another government program and we don't want this particular program to be taken in that light the minister of humanitarian affairs is yes she's is there because the of, uh, yeah because the you know the um, uh, uh, the idps the uh, refugees and uh, people that have come to us to ask for help. All these people are part and parcel of the society. And NIN is not dis discriminatory. It doesn't even ask who, uh, it's just to, to, to provide the answer, who are you? You understand, based on your own uh, bi biometrics and also so your demographic information. So that is why they are all but before the, now, the financial sector, you have the uh, central bank governor. Yes, yeah, the central bank governor, what role is he playing there? Yes, uh, the, you, the you know, when, when you talk of collection what? of uh, funds, no, or facilitation when, when of you, funding you, or what? No, when you talk of private sector in Nigeria, the first a thing that will come to your mind is the banks. So, and, uh, and if the banks are not uh, utilizing this uh, national identification number, then you will think that the private sector are not uh, interested. And since uh, 2016, the central bank governor have been playing a great role to make sure that the banks accept the NIN, and then he also pushes harmonization between the 
the BVL records and NIMSI, and right now we have done close to 15 million, and it is still continuous. So that is the biggest role that the central. Then bank your own role work. as secretary of the steering committee, yeah. you also double as the director general of NIMSI. So explain it to us. Yes, because uh, uh, the ball, uh, uh, the implementation day-to-day -day running of NIMSI stops at my own desk. Therefore, that is why I'm a secretary of this uh, higher body to now relate between the project implementation unit, which will be in NIMSI, with the steering committee to give them updates and also seek for approval and also send memos that will require strategic moves like uh, if we, if uh, if you want to move to uh, uh, the education sector, and we have found out that this uh, jam candidates, we found a particular way to to deal with jam candidates working with the jam, then we'll take it to the steering committee to approve those kind of strategies that we should implement. And talking about the strategies, the duration from what you're saying is three to five years. Yes. And in achieving that, from the whole coordination the steering committee is trying to make, step by step, what will be the breakdown? What will be the first point of action in actualizing this? Because you also mentioned earlier from mm -hmm. your opening remarks that the time frame may not be enough before well, we go to the well, second Okay, step. so you know that this is an ongoing project rather than some other projects whereby you go and start from scratch. That is why we are saying that it is ongoing. While it is ongoing, then we also have steps. First of all, we need, we need the project to be effective itself. Mm -hmm. We remember the federal executive uh, uh, approved it in September 2018. Then we got the World Bank board also to approve it this February. Then we now entered into implementation so we need the project itself to be to be effective which involves so so much work with ministry of finance and the world bank the the other do, uh, development partners eib and also afd so that is the really the very very first thing then we will also develop a, an implementation a business model and also strategic uh, plan that we will get to that. Then while we are also reviewing the, 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 the laws the, from the, all the conflicting laws from other, other, other agencies, then we, will, we, will, we have also advertised and gotten some, some of the private sector that will also participate. Then we come up with all the guidelines and then uh, uh, get them, get them, to give them the guidelines. Then they will get the equipment that we need to do. We will, will give do certification and also liaise with other other stakeholders like, like say, uh, 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 specialists in areas of like, uh, uh, like uh, the IT equipments that we can use, they, so that they can help to to certify those items then we will commence and it is like a funnel uh, those uh, those companies will come in and uh, as they as they finish this criteria and then they will go on to the field and start capturing then we will monitor and also that is where the civil society will also come in and then they will be monitoring which areas which areas are the vendors uh, concentrating only in the in the cities, then we said okay. Then we'll, uh, we'll give uh, maybe some more uh, incentives for them to go to those lo local areas. So all, but usually f an experience from what how it happened in some other places. Initially, first two three months they will concentrate in the towns. Then when they finish the people, then they have to go to the. Uh, other areas because it is a performance driven system. So from what you have said, where are we now? Well we are we are at the beginning. We are we are we 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 are trying to get the project uh, uh, effective and then to, so that we will commence the disbursement. We also 
you know, we have to also work at the back end, scale the back end. We already have have the machines and the uh, that is running and everything, but they need to scale up. What we have is capable of doing a hundred million, but we will not wait until we reach a hundred million to expand it to to the two hundred million. So, so all all these things are work in progress. So. We are focusing to commence the enrollment. Until when we commence the en enrollment, then the general public will not understand all what we have been doing. Now. But the, there are many strategies that are going on. When you say sorry, when you say commence the enrollment, is it yeah. on hold for now? No, no, no. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, when I said commence the enrollment for the ecosystem. Okay. But there is enrollment that is ongoing now, but even now too, because of the COVID, we have not been enrolling, but we have written to the, to the presidential tax force to give us a, approval. Again, the World Bank also came to our aid to buy us uh, face masks, uh, uh, some uh, um, uh, PPEs. P yeah all the PTS that are required for, for us to do the work. From your explanation, it appears to me the enrollment would be a large-scale one. Yes. So where is the National Population Commission? Uh, because if the whole thing is you are trying to catch, uh, capture people and put them in a database, uh, it appears it's also a responsibility that the National Population Commission has. Are you at some point collaborating or... Oh, yeah. uh, well, by okay. the time you capture, you, you give them the data or what? No, no. So there, there is a lot of distinction between what uh, uh, NIMSI does and what Population Commission does. There are overlaps, but in this spirit of the uh, harmonization, we have agreed that in this program, Population Commission is responsible for enrolling the uh, children at birth, and then they will also give them the, the, the birth certificate. If they want, they can also enroll adults also and send to the uh, back end. Then they can also uh, register death, you understand, in this particular program. So this is part of their everyday work to do with the continuous registration of vitals, and then they send uh, vital the data registration. To you. And st statistics. Yes, we 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 call, uh, we we uh, we will have linkage, not necessarily to send the data. They will only send the data that is impo important. Mind you, after this backlog, when the system is moving, that at birth, a child in the hospital is born, and Popsy is responsible for that child to be registered and be given a birth certificate and from that hospital uh, electronically that information will be sent to NIMSI and then NIMSI will generate the national identification number using the information oh, of child. the child mm. and also the parent or the guardian if the parent doesn't have uh, if the child doesn't have parent we do that and send back electronically so the child at birth will have NIN and therefore that issue of uh, this backlog of registration will not even come. We are doing all this because we have not done it for the past uh, 60 years. So that is why we want to now uh, do this backlog of uh, enrollment between in three to five years and resolve the problem. Then mind you, every t 10 years again, uh, um, Population Commission does uh, uh, census which is not only individual people, but also other, other things, like say your houses, your animals, your trees, and everything else. So that is their own, their own job, okay. so, and it is related. You mentioned earlier that you want to propose to the PTF to allow commencement of enrollment. Yes. Of course, we know that the COVID has altered the way things are being done. It's true. And we have a backlog of people who are yet to enroll yes. for NIN. Yes. So are you looking at um, 
a digital approach. I know the Ministry of Communications and Digital Economy is part of the steering committee, yes. whereby people can actually just go online and mm. get their registration done mm -hmm. instead of going to queue yeah. up. Yeah, yeah. You, if you, if you, if you, if you go on online and make a registration, you understand? You are, you are just doing part of the registration. It's okay. never going to be a complete re registration. In the Western world, because they have very good birth, birth uh, registration and also other informations that are linked, then you can do that confidently. Like in 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 UK. If I have your uh, your 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 name, your surname, your your date of birth, and your postcode, then 95% I can locate who you are. But okay. here we don't have the birth good uh, digital birth register. We also don't have not been even using the postcodes that we have on our even on our business card. Even mine doesn't have. But I promise that. After this set of cards finishes, I will put the postcode of my area in my business card. So we need to use that. It is also part of the ECOS system. Ex explain uh, to us, what, the, what will that postcode be doing? Well, the postcode is part of the address. It says where you, where you live. And in any community, people know the people that live in that community. But if we don't have... Uh, proper uh, street names and then proper house numbering and then utilize a postcode. Again, postal office is also working on to get a, a, a digital uh, postcode for us. So it's all part of the part of identification, as um, I'm saying. And it, when in an ecosystem, you have to talk about everything. It's not only the person identity but our focus is on the person uh, uh, identity so the centers that that if you have something mm. you can start with that uh, digital id but you still need the biometrics of the person which needs to which be done which this biometrics is the our standard is 442 and then the face okay. and in future with the iris also that is the one that you need someone to supervise you to get that information and our young guys like in lagos some of the firms have come up with uh, an app like look like uh, uber that uh, you can also when we start the uh, the ecosystem you can see the enrollment officers, mobile enrollment officers, like a Uber car, and then you can call them to come and do that, that er enrollment for you. So the enrollment is two types, demographic information, which you can do online. Even now, too, we have, uh, we have uh, an, uh, a portal whereby you can put in your information and print a 2D barcode that mm -hmm. you can then print and bring to our uh, to our office. When when you bring that to the office, they will use a barcode scanner and scan that information. You see, then you have reduced the the the, the manual work of entering the, the data. If that can be done, yeah. uh, I remember INEC yeah. captured similar, uh, uh, if you like, uh, information of prospective registered voters. Yes. Uh, I, 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 is INEC at some point going to give you that data, or are you starting afresh, or INEC data is not well, reliable? Well, as I said, that uh, so far, based on the, what we had, that is only the BVN data that is close to the standards okay. of NIMSI. And also because you have mentioned before the rate at which we have been enrolling is slow because we want it to be unique. We don't want anything that you can do and then restart, redo, redo it again. So that is why it is 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 slow. So INEC data we have we have commenced harmonization. They have given us some test data. We tested them and sent back to them, and then we are waiting for for the for the real harmonization to to commence. But you know, INEC is always busy 
every year they have uh, elections that they do. So we don't want to disturb them. We think that if we do this ecosystem, then you can recapture the data uh, uh, of every person, and then you can obviate doing that with uh, INEC. But we are doing that with the banks. Are you envisaging a situation whereby when you finish, INEC may not have to go all over and start registering people. All they need to do is to get data from, you, from your database. No, they don't even need to get the data. All, all what you need to do is that even the citizen too will say that this is my NIN. You, if you have NIN, you just come with your NIN and, and do, the, uh, do the election. Mm -hmm. So it's in their law now they have to do a voter's register mm -hmm. and then they will register you. And then they, in the, the process of registration exactly is the same with the process of registration for passport, the same process with that of uh, driver's license and the same with that of the NIMSI. So, in this ecosystem, all of us agreed mm -hmm. that let us do one registration and then all these other agencies will utilize the information. Okay, and if we're looking at rights of every individual, um, ensuring that everybody gets enrolled and have a name, people in the grassroots, some of this technology we can only find in the urban centers. Now, from what you stated earlier, um, part of the steering committee for the CM, CSOs, it's to reach out to the grassroots. Exactly. But that will require a lot of um, information that will require a lot of funding because you have to provide some of these um, equipment. And also, you mentioned the humanitarian as aspect to reach out to IDP camps. Now, some of those remote places, if we're having, if we have to capture the vision of having everybody enrolled, hmm. it's a huge task. It is. So, what is Nimsen looking at? Well, a, a part of this. Uh, uh, um, Part of the funding that we have also has uh, this grassroots communication. That is why we have the DG NOA is also part of this uh, steering committee. That is his role to d find a way of not only reaching the people in the grassroots but also talking to them in their own language and also in their own culture because that is their own uh, 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 strength. So. And apart from that, also the showing people the technology is also simple. It's just like telephone now. You don't need to tell the person in the grassroots how to use telephone. Hmm? You mean the mobile phone? Yes, the mobile phone. You understand? It's the same thing that the equipment too have been simplified. You have a mobile kit that people will go with that 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 looks friendly and it can be used. Then there is also uh, a communication, that uh, telecommunication. There are areas that where the, this telecommunication is where is is uh, is difficult. Again, our uh, Minister of Communication and Digital Economy is there to make sure that all the nooks and crannies, if there is no broadband or no uh, no fiber then there should be the, uh, the uh, mo uh, network mobile operators bandwidth that, that can throw in the data, or we put a VSAT in those locations to send, make sure that digitally we are really connected. Reaching those in the grassroots, uh, okay. what of those who, are, who have a nomadic uh, way of life? The Fulanese, for example, the fishermen who move from one location to the other. How are you going to capture their data? Yeah, when I, men I mentioned that we ha will have uh, fixed centers and also mobile. So the mobile enrollment will always go to the, uh, will follow the people wherever they are and, uh, and make sure that they are enrolled because it's very important. Just in future, just the way that uh, uh, even policemen will be asking you uh, for your identity, and they will ask you for your name, and they will be able to uh, uh, verify that name wherever they are. So we are, we are like many agencies, but it's one government, and that one government that we want to, we want to achieve.
You know, the N NOA, from what you're saying, that is their role as part of the steering committee yes. to educate the people. Yes. But there is still this gap of fear. You know, people are scared to let out their information in terms of security. I know you mentioned the yeah, law yeah, yeah. will come out before yeah, the end of the yeah. year, but security, there the cybercrime that go on. How will someone ensure yeah. that the protection of yeah. their data is yeah. in check? Well, uh, that, is, uh, that is a very important aspect. And there are two things to, to that. There is, there is privacy and also there is the cyber security aspect. The whole program is designed uh, with uh, privacy in, in, in as part of the, the system. Like if you can see even our existing card does not have your name on top of the card. Yes. This is privacy by, by design, up, up initial. And also that before NIMSI uh, discloses your information, it requires your consent. Okay. So unless you are in the bank to, to, to ask for transaction, to do a transaction, nobody from that bank will send information. Then, then why would the policeman ask, ask me what is my name? Yo, the, the policeman too, he, he can ask you because if he wants to be, uh, ask who you, who you are, and it is everywhere known that you, you can be asked by police to, to confirm who are you and for you to prove who you are by, by law. In Nigeria, you have to produce your, your, your national identification number. And then he can then, then also use his own uh, uh, equipment to confirm that what you have said is really correct. So there will be gadgets provided when that, if no, that the, will the happen? No, you, you use existing gadgets. Okay. Nowadays, everything is an app. So if, uh, if they have a, more, a, a smartphone, then you can use an app to carry out that. Or you yourself, too, if they ask you, you can use your, your smartphone and show them your digital uh, identity, which they can also scan the 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 uh, the, the QR code, code yeah. or on the system and confirm. You know, the last time you came here, we talked about the product production of the card, yeah. the um, national identity yes. um, card. Yeah. Now, someone was confused. I was having a chat with someone, and he was confused because when he goes to the bank, yes. the cards that were produced in 2014, yes. they tell him it's expired. Yes. Now, he's confused. The, for the fact that does the card, if the card expires, does that mean his name Identity. is also expired? Well, uh, you know the as as you you say, you rightly say, it's the card that expired. Okay. It's not the national mm -hmm. identification number. The national identification number is for life. You understand? Okay. It's only when person rested, then the number will be rested, and that number is not going to be given to any person again and every secure document you understand like your passport if you have a passport international passport that does not have a a a a, 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 a no okay that does not have an expiry date then it is a fake yeah. passport so whoever you are you understand they will not issue you a pass pass traveling pass passport that this is your passport for life no you can, they can only give you in your own association, like say something for life, but not in secure document. So every security document must have an expiry date. And for the, for the card that we have, the expiry date right now is five years. And after five years, automatically those, uh, those uh, cryptography in the card is expired. Okay. So therefore, automatically the card is expired and you need to come and get a new one. Hmm. What, in, among the terms of reference of the steering committee is the utilization of foundational identity yes. to access service. What does that mean? Well, as, as we said, right now you know that if you go to renew your passport or international passport or get a new one, they will ask you for your national identification number okay so the strategic roadmap says that if you provide that n number then they will use that number to directly check 
our system that is utilization of the of the national identification number so if your information in our system conflict with the one that they have they will ask you to go and update this information if you don't have NIN at all then this strategic roadmap says that then they should capture your uh, minimal data and send to NIMC to generate that NIN and they continue with their job. So that is exactly what ecosystem is all about. Now there is a correlation certainly between uh, the, uh, the identity ecosystem yeah. with the COVID-19 protocols and the needs for services that we have and also the need uh, to access data that you just explained. But there's this conspiracy theory about uh, that is going on, even uh, especially during this COVID, people are talking about the need that is this conspiracy to generate uh, computer chips and then put them into individuals, things like that, and then that way every individual becomes a robot and all that. How is this allay the fears of Nigerians to say that this your identity project is not that, or it is? Or its relation. No. Or well, well, it's far it, from it. it what has, is the it has, exactly the situation? It has no relationship whatsoever. You see, the, this this uh, this uh, registration process is that to capture your uh, biometrics and then your demographic information and issue you a, a digital identity and and everywhere. So it is only Nigeria that do, even does not have. A registration of all its own citizens. So that is what we want to correct. But when it comes to the health sector, the, this privacy that we talked about is much more in the health sector. So if you are going to issue a health card, it has to be for that, for that, uh, for that sector. And if you have that information in that sector, it's only your doctor that will have access yeah. to your own information. Even your doctor too, until when you come to him, that you are there sitting face to face with him. Otherwise, if you had done anything else, then that will uh, turn to be, to be criminal. But it's good for people to, 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 to have vision, you understand, of future things that may uh, likely to happen, but also because we are also human beings, we can always, create uh, 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 safeguards to this. So part of this project also is the cyber security, okay? This has been reviewed and then we are going to upgrade it and continuously work with other agencies that are working on this uh, cyber security because security is a moving target. You understand it has to happen. But you need to secure your people, you need to know them and then secure them. And then make sure that there is a data protection law. And that is why that we, uh, uh, currently we have, uh, we have uh, regulations from NIDA and they are very stringent re regulations of utilization of the data. Like the data for NIMSI, you have to be there or with your own consent before someone else uh, checks your, your data. You have to give the consent. And the system will be built in such a way that you can query the system and find out who and who have used my own, my own data. So there's no room for double? There's no room for, for, for those aspects. So there are uh, regulations that will take care of all this. So there is no likelihood of, at some point, this data you are capturing going into a world system that will now make every individual to be identifiable, his location, what he does, what he is doing, what he is eating, no. things like that. Because this, these are the conspiracy no. theories flying around. No, no, not at all. Not in this current system that we have. We don't we don't even, you don't even have the bandwidth. You understand? They're talk, people that are doing those things are talking of uh, 5G. Do you have 5G in your system? You were you are complaining earlier that when you are in 
in the uh, in the DG's office that uh, the network is not good. Is that the kind of system that you use to do this? These are good to 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 do uh, films and things like that, and to for for human beings to to think out of the box. But they are not really uh, realities. Mm, okay. But, but certainly, this will entail a lot of funds. So as we round off, tell us, or because you did mention that yeah. there's collaboration with the World Bank. Yeah. What what quantum of funds are coming from the World Bank, for example, or uh, yeah, from the, the federal the, government the, side? Yeah, the total that is coming from the development partners is uh, 430 million USD, which uh, which US dollars. US dollars. So that is what we intend. over a period of three years or five years or over the, the entire project over or? the period of three years that that is what we are going to spend on this project and how much have you accessed so far none zero when will you start because it's not yet effective as I mentioned that we need to put certain things in place and we believe that before the before our plan was uh, by by June this year we will start but. COVID interrupted everything. So right now, we may be looking towards uh, October or December to, to start, but definitely it should not reach next year before we start. When you are going to start, will it entail uh, uh, employment of some ad hoc staff, or are the staff in NIMSI uh, adequate? Well, the, you see, the, there will be people, because private sector is, is involved, those those private sector will employ uh, people, will employ the enrollment officers, will employ security, will employ uh, IT expert. Will they say there are direct employments and also indirect employments that will that will key into the presidential directive to generate jobs for Nigerians. Okay, very briefly, I know we're about to round up, but um, I know NIMC started the commencement of um, enrollment of diasporans. Yes. For 15 countries across five continents. What's yes. the level of cooperation? Well, uh, there is, you see, first of all, what we wanted to uh, resolve is having access. If you have access to something, you understand, however, maybe it's difficult, you'll you, you at least do that. So right now there is, uh, there is access and uh, a majority of Nigerians in diaspora where, the, where COVID allows them to, to do the enrollment, they have been enrolling and the numbers are rising. So What's the benefits rising. for them back home? Uh, a, lot of, a lot of benefits because, you know, uh, wherever you are, you, Nigerians always want to identify themselves with their with their country, that is the first benefit. Then secondly, because of the presidential directive that it should be uh, embossed on the passport, and you know that the ones outside Nigeria are the major consumers of the passport, so they need it for that passport. Then apart from that, also as you mentioned in future, they may also, the, the technology and uh, INEC may allow them also to to do the voting with their with their own name wherever they are. So that, that, be is, possible, that, that is, may likely be a possible criteria. Yes, yes, okay. yes. Yes, not criteria, but part uh, of the criteria. But it will allow. You understand that there is now uh, it will facilitate facilitate uh, that particular aspect. But it is INEX exactly. Yes. But uh, yeah. those are the things that from my discussion with uh, the diasporans. Okay. Engineer Aliu Abubakar Aziz, Director General NIMSI, and of course, Secretary of the uh, Steering Committee for a Strategic Roadmap for the ID Development of Nigeria. Thank you so much for coming. We have heard all the issues you have analyzed and the prospects for uh, this enrollment, and of course, uh, the need to have the ID ecosystem. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Ruth Aguele of our NTA Current Affairs Unit, thank you. For thank you very much. Coming. Of course, Ruth is the assistant producer of this program. She's wonderful and putting together each of the editions. Uh, in the last 50 minutes, we've been talking with the Director General, uh,
of NIMSI, Aliu Abu Bakr Aziz, on, with a focus on digital national identity ecosystem, which is uh, uh, directly related to the Nigeria's and the federal government's uh, desire to have a strategic roadmap for identity management ecosystem. Thank you uh, so much for being there and watching us. That's platform. Uh, Muhammad Kudaw Walker, bye for now. Anyone who values financial security and ultimately desires financial freedom, creating at least one additional stream is no longer a luxury, it has become a necessity. Diversifying your income stream is crucial to protect yourself and your family against the unavoidable ups and downs of economic and industry cycles. Because of the financial risk that come from relying on one source of income, such as a job or a business, consider creating at least one or more additional streams to generate cash flow. The benefits of having multiple streams of income include peace of mind because you know there will always be money to spend. Also, you will earn much more than you currently earn from your day's job. Therefore, you will live bigger and better. Your additional income streams can be active, passive, or a combination of the two. Some may pay you for doing something that you love, active, while others can provide income for you without having to do much of anything at all, passive. Here are multiple streams of income opportunities. Selling information in hard book formats. Selling information in the form of downloadable e-books. Making money from referral opportunities. Training classes consulting opportunities, dealership opportunities, design opportunities, manufacturing opportunities, investment opportunities. The list is definitely not exhaustible. To create wealth, you must make investment that will create dependable streams of income flows, independent of your main source of income. The time to act is now. Begin implementing this practice and before you know it, within months, you can be enjoying the benefits and the financial security and freedom that comes from having multiple streams of income. These days, people get their news and information 
for more media sources than ever before. Some of the news and information given are fake, unverified, doctored and manufactured to create confusion, stare disaffection and cause disunity. Before you believe or share any news, ask yourself, is this real? Is it from a credible source? Is it verified or verifiable? Fake news is dangerous. Whether you do it for fun or for political gains, real people can get hurt. Fake news. Don't create it. Don't spread it. This is a public service announcement from NTA. Literature is subdivided into the three classic forms of ancient Greek, poetry, prose, and drama. The order does not suggest anything as any of the three can come first, second, or third, as the case may be. It's African literature on NTA International. I am Nen Nabasi. African literature, like its counterparts globally, follows the same pattern of three genres. Today, we shall be having a look at one of the classes, prose. The origin, definition, forms, and many more will be considered. All novels and short stories are written in prose. Having laid a background of what prose is, now, Let's launch you into the world of African prose. Prose in Africa is often mythological, sometimes sung or in the form of storytelling. What then is African prose? Well, when I thought of the word prose, I thought, I said, what does she want to say? Because we live in a world of prose. But to, for definition's sake, let me say that prose is not poetry, is not drama. So it, it features in so many things. It features in our textbooks, it features in novels. But uh, prose is something that you can just write on without following a structure, a measure, you understand. So we have novels, we have textbooks, we have all kinds of things that fall into prose that are neither poetry nor drama. That's, uh, and in Africa, we have what we define as African prose. Just like when we talk of African literature, we think of African prose. I remember that I teach my students that African pro 